that is more than the population of Chicago. The front or the back of a certain train, one carriage will be reserved only for like, oh no. Like, oh no. Hey guys, on Ash Japanese, today I'm gonna give you 10 facts that might be quirky, that might be weird, strange, or fascinating about trains here in Japan. Busiest. Japan has the busiest stations in the world. Top three are, for example, Shinjuku Shibuya and Ikebukuro. And fascinatingly enough, in Shinjuku, every day about three million people try to go through that station and commute through the Shinjuku station. And if you count that up, that is more than the population of Chicago. So even though those stations are insanely busy, everything works because people are used to it. The staff is used to it, they're trained for it, and the people who commute through those stations already know where they're going, what they're going to do. And it's always very interesting for me to see when I change, especially at Shinjuku, I sometimes see travelers get lost because stand out in the crowd because everyone knows where they're going. Like everyone just goes, Shh, I'm gonna go there. Shh. Well, the travelers are the ones who are like, which platform do I go to? So that's when I usually stop and help people out. But looking at the general public, everyone knows where they're going and that's why everything works. The most crowded. Everyone must have seen, you guys must have seen, pictures of Tokyo and the Tokyo trains and how you can get squished into those trains. Seriously, sometimes it's like you're being in a little sardine. You're like a little sardine getting squished into a tin. And then you drive for like a couple of stops and then you get out of the tin. And that's a feeling that I really, really understand. But it's interesting, it still works because people line up and people try to get onto the train. When it gets really busy in the mornings, you might have seen pictures of train pushers. Now, they used to be more of a thing. Sometimes you still see them here at stations where they help push people into the train. Sometimes when a bag is standing out, they help you to push the bag back in. But what I've seen is sometimes they will actually ask a person to just take the next train. Like, dude, the next train comes in three minutes. Please wait. You're blocking everyone's way. Because the trains, um, the doors will close. And if they close on a person, obviously they won't close perfectly. They will back open up, back up. Um, but what I've seen a couple of times is the train doors will close slightly and people will push in their backs to just make it. But seriously, I've had so many journeys where I like, right, and my bum is like against another lady's bum and it's like, this is a really, really weird train journey. But uh, that's one of the things you might have to live with if you want to live here in Tokyo. If you can't deal with so many people and the crowdedness of it, I recommend you to not take rush hour trains so if you just avoid the rush hours you'll be fine it won't be as bad but the it's not always as bad that seems to be the image with many many people abroad but it's not always as bad it's just especially in the mornings during rush hour and in the evenings when everyone is going home the best time for traveling is just avoiding it go like after 9 30 that's when things start to calm down a little bit in the mornings cards. Now mentioning how crowded these trains can get you might understand why they are women only cards. Uh, these ones have been established now and they usually are happening in the mornings. They're only set for a certain time in the mornings. The front or the back of a certain train one carriage will be reserved only for women or for kids who are still in elementary school or people who need help like people with a wheelchair or who need some certain kind of assistance that is reserved for them so it's not just uh, priority seats on one side of the train it's a whole cart that is women's only in the mornings uh, there are certain reasons for that but before I go into that if you are worried about riding on a women's only cart if you a dude and you want to ride on it make sure it's after rush hour because after rush hour everyone can use that cart so don't worry about that now there are a couple of reasons why the women's only carts were established and the most commonly known abroad is the train gropers. It's been a real big issue here in Japan but it's nice to see that people are trying to change it, trying to make things better and give women who commute daily to work on also students a safer atmosphere to ride in. One opinion is, is that it's kind of sad that something like this had to get established in Japan but on the other side it is a move towards protecting women and students who want to go to their way to work. And especially if it gets very crowded, it makes personally a big difference if you're getting squished against a sweaty businessman or if you get squished against a sweaty business lady. I must say, I 
if I had to choose, I'd choose the second one. And that's why I'm actually, for example, taking the ladies only train in the mornings. It's just like a ladies zone, so people feel more comfortable. One of my friends said she prefers the ladies only cart because it is a quiet and B it doesn't smell so bad in summer. She says he has a very sensitive nose. So that was her opinion there. So it gives you a safe environment to travel to work even if you're commuting for a long time or especially if you're commuting for a long time and uh, lots of women and girls take advantage of it to get to work or to school safely. sit down on the train in Japan. I know that sounds weird but I was used to uh, in the UK and from Germany to sit down on the train. That might not be happening if you live here in Japan. Generally on the mornings and during rush hour uh, you cannot sit down unless you're very lucky or unless you have a plan. I might tell you about that one day as well. But generally the seats are lined on one side. On the side of the doors is usually a row of seats. So instead of them facing forwards and backwards, generally the trains here in Tokyo at least always have the back against the wall where the doors are. And so only a limited number of people can sit there in the first place. So about seven to six and sometimes eight people can sit on one side and the rest has to stand. There are lots of handrails and usually the announcements will also say, please, we might have certain stops. Please always hold on to the handrails. And I can really recommend you that because the amount of time like I almost fell into other people and got knocked over by other people who didn't hold on to the handrails is ridiculous the trains will suddenly like just go and you're like oh no. like oh no but yeah that's one of the things there are certain ways of making sure you might get a seat for example getting on at a certain station uh, standing in line is very important when you get into the train and hopefully you'll be able to snatch a seat but don't expect it. I generally drive to work an hour and a half and I stand for an hour and a half. So that's why I usually have comfortable shoes. That might be a thing you might have to consider if you're here in Japan and you're commuting. Delays. If a train is actually delayed in Japan, there is usually a good reason for it. Unfortunately, one of the most common reasons for trains being delayed in Japan are train suicides, when usually workers jump in front of the train. In that case, it will take about two hours for, uh, well, the trains to run the normal speed again. It's a very, very sad issue here in Japan and especially in May and June is the times when there are loads of train delays because loads of people commit suicides here in Japan. I hope this is an issue that in the future will be resolved somehow. Also, if your train is delayed for a certain time, you usually can get a delay certificate from your train company that you can then give to your employer as a good reason to why you're late for work. People are very much here on time in Japan, so it's another thing that people look out for. Variety! There is a great variety of different train services. In your country, for example, the metro might all be connected and the same thing. Here in Tokyo, we have the Tokyo Metro, but we also have JR and then we have loads and loads and loads of other private lines. So you might think that you can use this ticket on the same one, but sometimes you can't. You sometimes need to check. But recently, since we have the PASMO and the Suica card, it's a lot easier to get around because it just takes off the amount of money that you were traveling on that day. There are also local, semi-express, express, rapid, super express. There's so many different types of train on one train line as well. And sometimes two different train lines will share the same tracks for a certain amount of time and then separately go their ways again. It's insane. And it makes it very confusing at times. Precise. If you look on the floor, on the platforms in Japan, you will see exactly where the doors are. You can also see which card and which door number you will get into. And the trains will stop exactly where they should. And if they don't, they will actually apologize and then move a little bit. So they're just at the right precise location for opening the doors. Get around. Many train companies take big pride in the stuff that they do, so they offer certain value tickets, which for example include maybe meals, may might include different buses in a certain region, or other things. So 
if you get like a value ticket, you get something attached with it and get the best out of it. With those ones, best ask at the main stations and they might be able to help you. For example, I traveled with the tuna ticket to Cat Island the other day and it was a great value that you got for a low price which included food and attractions. If you're curious about that one, I put that video in the top right of the screen so you know how to get to Cat Island. So that's just one of the things that train companies here in Japan offer their customers. I hope you enjoyed this video. There are loads of facts about Japanese trains if you want to see more about that or if you have some other facts you would like to add, write that in the comment box. I'm looking forward to reading it. I hope you have a lovely day and let me know if there's anything else you'd like us to feature about Japanese trains. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for watching. Woohoo!